Hey, you look loco. Eh, not my best work. It is 5 at 48. I'm Danny Bonducci. This is Casey OK. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I have Cliff Averillitis, and I blame you. All right. Do you want to tell us about it? Yesterday, I'm leaving here, and this was after you told the story about waving to Cliff Averill, who's your new best friend. Yeah. And you were concerned that he didn't see you wave or you didn't wave back fast enough. So yesterday, I'm leaving here, and Cliff Averill pulls in. I wave at him. I drive away. I've never met Cliff Averill. He doesn't know who I am and why I'm waving at him. I don't think that's Cliff Averill-itis. He may not know. Well, first of all, he's a super famous guy. And I People bet he knows him why. Constantly. Yeah, I bet he knows why you're waving at him to be friendly and yeah. say hello. You know, oh, the fact that being friendly comes so alien to you, you find him recognize it. But he, oh, it's bad. Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, no, but your coworkers, and like I said, he's famous. I, there was a road closed sign on my way that for every day this week. And uh, yesterday on my way home, the guy waved me through. And right as I got to him, he goes, Danny, like that. And I put a peace sign out the window, although he's behind me, so it was the love sign or the F-U sign, depending on where you live. But I don't think Cliff's that shocked that some lady waved to him. So am I friends with Cliff now because I waved at him? Yeah. Awesome. (laughs) I'm so excited to have a new friend. (laughs) There you go. Uh, He's a friendly guy. I think He's a a friendly guy. He went out of his way on the Cliff Avery wave to me a day. He went out of his way to be really uh, nice to me. Yeah. By the way, uh, I don't walk around feeling, you know, like sometimes you feel this way, sometimes you feel that way, sometimes you feel this way over here. But the trifecta, if you will, I don't usually just walk around feeling, huh, I'm a pretty little white dude. But when you stand, <laughs> that guy dresses, he he looks ready to go play yeah. any second. And I don't mean play like, you know, hopscotch. I mean, he could go play football right this second. <laughs> He's a lot of guy. Yeah, yeah. he is. So, uh, sure. yeah, I'd, I'd be his pal. I just, I don't see that coming. No? You know, I, I don't, yeah, no, I don't see us hanging. I just, uh, I'd love to, but I'd show off to all my friends as my friend Cliff. <laughs> Maybe he has. I've gone over a Cliff. <laughs> Maybe he has the same dreams as you, that he wants to play guitar in uh, Applebee's. You never know. I think that's probably absolutely true. You, you never you don't know. know. Might you be. Guys a lot of famous baseball good. players no. do. Yeah. Have yeah. guitar albums and. Uh, William Shatter has a spoken word album. Yeah. Sure. He's not a baseball player or an athlete, but yeah. Was he an yeah. athlete ever? No, he was just an actor. I have no idea what he would William Shatter was up to. <laughs> it's a so great, a great album. He though. told me not to call him Bill the other day. Oh, really? really? That was kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> I I was tweeting some, and I've known him a really long time, and I said something about listen, Bill, and then uh, nothing. Didn't tweet back, and we've known each other my like my whole life, or at least eleven or twelve at the Studio City Karate School, Chuck Norris's Karate School. So I'm oh, like, cool. I know this guy from Denver. He was there too. Uh, and he was there a lot, and he's a black belt and a real one. Not, yeah. yeah, I'm famous. Give me a black belt. Um, but anyway, so uh, I said, now Bill, blah 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 blah, and I didn't hear back from him. So I wrote, hey, you have to text me or tweet me back. That was the first time I ever had the courage to call you Bill, and don't leave me hanging. He goes, never call me Bill again. Oh. And they didn't text me back. You want to bat- or tweet me back, bastard, which is what I tweeted him, bastard. <laughs> so I'm giving him up, and I'm going to be friends with Cliff Avery. We're going to go play guitar at Applebee's. All right. Because that's what's happening these days. Uh, so, man, I have a lot to tell you, actually. I was, I was out and about. Uh, it's, it was Wonton Wednesday yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yum. Went very well, though I have not. <laughs> wonton Wednesday comes from wonton soup. I get wonton soup on Wednesdays. Yeah. And you have to work for it first. You got to go be Buddhist. Well, that's, some people would not call that work. I call it work, though. Yeah. I think it's almost horrible. Oh, I actually yeah. discussed it, tweeting, tweeting, quitting. Yeah, quitting. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah. So we walked into the the Buddhist place. It was very nice. I'll zen out, and I think they even own that word. They have a trademark. Um, and I walked in, and I put my twenty dollars down because it's ten dollars per person per class. So, and I go to put my shoes on thing because we're running late. We're good. We're there. You know, by the skin of our teeth. You don't want to go in. People are praying and meditating and being weird near the last. There's even a door that says four late entries. Oh. Oh. But it's right next to the main door. It's just to shame you. I can't see any <laughs> other reason to go. It's not like it's the back of the whole thing or anything. You'd go in and be in the exact same place you were with any other door. But except you have to go through the door of, of shame. Yeah. So uh, we get in there yesterday and I'm running. So I go to take my shoes off, put them on the thing, run back. And as I run back, the lady's got change. And I don't it for me. And I don't have any change coming. It's kind of funny to say at a Buddhist place. I have no change <laughs> coming. Should. Very funny. Uh, you should. You want to. But I slowed down just out of curiosity. And she goes, okay, $3 and something. And I said, I, I don't understand. And she goes, well, you're a senior rate and a regular rate. Oh. Oh. Now, am I an old Buddhist soul or am I just old? What is happening here? Why, why do I get $3.95 where uh, Amy doesn't get any? Oh, it's all sad. I'm all old and dying. I'm still barefoot and I'm late. I got to go. So... 
I do something super uh, anti uh, in- intuitional. Huh. Uh, I say, no, I got to go. And I got that lady holding my $3 and change. And now she knows I'm not a senior and she'll never give me that back. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm not <laughs> happy about that. Um, the meditation part where if, you're, if your mind wanders, um, uh, just get back to your meditation. You're focusing on your breath. Just get back to it. Your mind's going to wander. No matter. Statistically speaking, your mind's going to wander every seven seconds, and that's when you're good at this. Okay. Which made me feel a little bit better. But I, I actually never made seven, except for the guy next to you breathing, which is kind of weird. It's, you're, I, you're, it's like, don't just focus on your breath. Wontons. One breath. <laughs> I didn't even make it one breath. Let me just try to try your kid. Okay, ready? Bang the little guy in. Senior, what are you talking about? Oh, dude, oh, man. So that went on a lot. But we went to this restaurant. I wrote it down. Um, it's called Zian. That's X I A N noodles. And it was, I had the tingly beef, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which I did. Did and you feel silly asking for the tingly beef? There was, can I be honest with you? There was not enough English going on. To, I could have said anything and then I would have pointed to the menu, which is weird because okay. I said it. The place was packed. This place does really well on Yelp and all of that stuff. Um, you'd think she would have heard people order it enough to recognize the words tingly beef. Yeah. <laughs> but nope, then a menu, a menu goes up and I point to the tingly beef. Yeah. And then I laugh and then Amy laughs, no laughter from the lady. <laughs> Apparently, she has tingly beef all the time. <laughs> Police are investigating a shooting that happened just about two hours ago on South Willow Street and MLK Junior Way South. According to police, the man who was shot is now fighting for his life, and they do not have a description of a shooter at this time. But obviously, this is an ongoing investigation. Also breaking overnight, firefighters are working to get a house fire under control on 115th Place Southeast. Authorities say the house is burning, two cars are burning, People have gotten out safely, but we are awaiting an update on a dog that may be trapped inside. Yeah, I, I've heard that. If I was the commander, much as I love my Minuti cat and I wanted that little French bulldog real bad, if I were in charge, I don't know what I would do if I was a fireman with feet on the ground, hose in my hands. Uh, but if I was the captain or whoever, I would say nobody goes in there after the dog. Yeah. You know, you can't lose, you can't lose a trained fireman, human being's life over the pen, no matter how much you love. They're not people. A salmonella outbreak is being linked to food being prepared at one of your favorite places. Tebow! Costco! Oh, Oh, Costco, Costco, yeah. Costco Wholesale Warehouse in Issaquah. Health officials are now monitoring the deli to make sure it continues to take steps to prevent further problems. People got sick in August and July and have tested positive for the same strain of salmonella and the place they have in common is Costco. Now, uh, remind me, um, is salmonella caused because humans aren't clean enough and touch things? Yeah, and often from uh, raw meat, raw chicken yeah. in particular. Right. The other one you might be thinking of is E. coli, and yeah, that's, might be. that's the one from bathrooms. So salmonella typically is food preparation not done properly. Yeah, cross-contamination. From- but it's cross-contamination. Yeah. Somebody has to touch that meat, right? Yeah, or that meat. Yeah, meat could touch the counter, and right. then yeah, okay, other cool. food. And then the other one, cooked food. E. coli is, e. coli is, is not using your bathroom properly. So I guess that's it's one the good of the news. Things I'm best at. <laughs> yeah. I could spend all day there doing my study, if you know what I'm saying. It's not the not using it properly. It's the not cleaning up after you. Uh, I go with what Sarah says, and she says it's people who don't know how to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Japan Airlines made a big announcement. They got together with the Port of Seattle leaders at SeaTac to announce daily nonstop flights to Tokyo starting in March. Nice. The announcement comes amidst a major uh, renovation project, an expansion project happening at SeaTac. It looks great on paper. Yes. That, that high thing so planes can go under the bridge. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. But it looks neat and it looks futuristic. And I got to say, I think that's one of Seattle's appeal, appealing is what makes it appealing is how beautiful it is and how green it is. But when you investigate a little bit, Matt, we're just we we're going to invent flying saucers soon. <laughs> we're, we're Seattle. It does look super cool. And I, I just hope that they can stay on target, which is a completion date of August 2020. But taking all the right steps because SeaTac is growing. Seattle is growing and we need to accommodate more travelers. So SeaTac did need to expand. 
Japan Airlines previously flew in and out of SeaTac from 83 to 92. So this is a big return for Japan Airlines. You'll be able to go to Tokyo and, of course, beyond and then earn miles through Alaska Airlines mileage program. And this morning, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford will be testifying. This will happen in just under an hour. Yeah, I'm, I was going to say I'm glued to my TV, but obviously I'm not. But <laughs> I'm so interested in this because I usually play my favorites. I look right at whatever's happening. I say, okay, that's true. That's a lie. He's right. She's right. I, but this, it's true. She's a doctor. Just because she's a judge doesn't mean he can, oh, well, she must be crazy to say that against me. I'm a judge. Oh, yeah, well, she's a PhD, I believe. Yeah. She's a doctor. you you got to take this lady seriously. Well, the number is now at four, but only two people will be testifying today, and that is Brett Kavanaugh and his accuser. She has asked that he not be in the room at the time. Whether or not that's that a reasonable request, right? You do? Yeah. I don't. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's part of the law. You get to face your accuser. Well, it's not a court of law. It's a, a job interview, so essentially. Uh, no, you're being questioned and a, and a legal outcome, I believe, by the Senate. And most of them are, in fact, lawyers. But no right. matter what it is, you do have a right to face your accuser. But they could have done it by you know, Skype or some such thing. If she's weird about being in the same room with she, a guy she made violent claims about, right. I guess she has a right. The other big news out of Washington, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point, its third rate hike this year. For that impact on consumers, they say if you are a borrower, it's going to hurt. If you are a saver, it's going to help. An increase in rates translates to higher borrowing costs for consumers. This is the benchmark for interest rates across the economy, including the prime rate, which is what's used by banks for borrowing. For and what is it? Credit cards. What is the current rate? Prime rate, yeah. Oh, I have no idea. I mean, oh. I can look it up. No, um, no, I was just, you were telling us what's up by a quarter out, a quarter point or something like that. I thought it would just be right in front of you. No, it's it's a quarter of a percentage point. So this is going to be across all different types of borrowing. So if you have a, a, a loan, say you have a mortgage and you, you have a variable rate, I have no idea what your rate is. Whatever it is, it's going to go up by a quarter of a percentage point. If you have a credit card with eight point eighteen percent that's going up. So it totally depends on what your borrowing rate is. I right. can't tell you that I don't trust the variable rate. I've bought, uh, oh man, moving around the country as a disc jockey, I bought a dozen homes easily and I would never get a variable. Scary. What you, what you can do is you're going to buy in at 3% and the next day they're going to say, oh man, 72% now. Your, your raise has gone up a little bit. So this is for existing credit cards, home equity lines of credit, adjustable rates mortgages. So it totally depends on what you have in your personal finances. So the interest rates will be going up. As I said, it's the third rate hike this year. The Fed's rate hike can also impact private student loans with variable interest rates. So as you said, those interest rates that are variable can certainly be very scary for there's people. You're be not a, locked in. Yeah, but there's got to be a reason for them. You know, banks offer them to reasonable people all the time, and some people take them. That's a mm -hmm. normal thing. Yeah. I just would never do it because I just don't have that kind of faith. They say for people that are, are going to be purchasing a home that they won't be living in for long, that it could right. be a good deal. I haven't told it's you a short term exactly investment. Right. Authorities in southern Mexico disarmed and placed under investigation the entire police force on Alcapulco. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It is crazy, but it, it says something, but I would always thought that the Army was as corrupt as the police department in Mexico. Yeah. It's To be honest with you, it's one of the many, many charms of Mexico is how corrupt the cops are. There's because it's easy to just bribe them? There's nothing and... you can't get out of for 50 bucks. Maybe you shouldn't kill a guy. But aside from that, like they never, they laugh at drunk driving, man. You can hit the pedals, that's good. Just give me my $50 and you're gone. <laughs> Well, they believe that the cops in Acapulco have been infiltrated by drug gangs. The officials in the Guerrero state issued arrest warrants for two top Acapulco police commanders, accusing them of homicide. Wow. Now, back in the day, especially throughout the 1960s, it, Acapulco was at the top of the food chain. Elvis Presley made three movies there. Yeah. And now the police have been... <laughs> placed under investigation and their their guns have been taken away. Wow. Stripped of guns, radios, bulletproof vests, they've all been taken in for background checks. Um, so do they, they have like a substitute police force for Acapulco? How does that work? There's no cops in Acapulco anymore? Soldiers, Marines, and state police. Oh, they yes, there's, there's the Army. That's yeah. all who's there.
The U.S. government is repeating its travel alert, advising U.S. citizens not to travel to Guerrero due to armed groups that are active in the region. And Guerrero is where Acapulco is? Yeah. I thought it was in Jalisco. Uh, Acapulco had a homicide rate of 103 per 100,000 inhabitants, one of the highest in Mexico and the world. Wow. Yeah. How about some good news in the news? Yeah. Love, love that. European scientists think they have found a major breakthrough in treating Alzheimer's disease. European scientists say they've developed new drugs that can target Alzheimer's before it takes hold, as opposed to just trying to slow it down. No, well, that's good. Yeah, we don't know much about it because clearly they want to keep this under wraps. Because I, I want my dog that I'm going to get one of these days to sniff out my Alzheimer's. I was watching. No, I was watching <laughs> a thing yesterday on dogs that accurately 99% of the time sniff out cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So. Amazing. I'll go back to it. I'd like to have my dog that I want to get someday be able to come up and just start biting me on the foot or something if I start going uh, senile on him. They, <laughs> have, get to the um, hospital. they have dogs that can do it for diabetes. Yeah. Sniff your insulin levels. I, I don't know that the, I've not heard of it for Alzheimer's yet. Uh, I'm inventing it right now. Get on board. I, I, all right, <laughs> we'll get, get with these floor, scientists, man. Danny. And the treatment is that the dog will bite you on the on foot. On the foot. And then, <laughs> you know, and then you go to where the treatment is. What, want, am I a doctor, Paul? <laughs> you want some more good news? Yeah. Is that cool that it's the same? Text that word right now to 200-200 for your chance to win. All the rules and details at KZOK.com. We were just talking about SeaTac, how they're undergoing a big, big transformation. In San Francisco, they too underwent a big transformation in the, what is called the Grand Central of the West. This is a huge transit center that opened last month in the heart of downtown San Francisco after nearly a decade of construction. Wow. 100,000 passengers each weekday, 45 million people a year. The cost, $2.2 billion. They opened it, they celebrated, and then someone said, "Uh uh-oh, what's that big crack up there? Oh, no. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) They weren't looking at the fat guy. (laughs) Does that whole pants too low thing. No, they shut the train station down yesterday because they discovered a huge crack near a weld on a stress-bearing horizontal beam. They're not sure how long the crack is, but they are going to close the train station uh, uh, out of precaution. Right, right, right. I thought nobody even had crack anymore. (laughs) And the second, I'm going to vote for you, Paul, okay? Paul and I say leave me? it and just keep doing business. Oh, okay. Take your chances. <laughs> yeah. Just like the viaduct. Take take the viaduct all the way to San Francisco yeah. where the crack's never going to bother you. <laughs> I mean, imagine if we underwent this huge undertaking for getting rid of the viaduct and then we find a crack in that new tunnel. That's what this is akin to. It's not to. that hard to imagine. Yeah, no, I can really. imagine. That's all. I can imagine now that I'm imagining water leaking in. And yeah. one day going through it after about the eighth time feel going, well, water shouldn't drip through there. <laughs> That's what I can imagine. In Australia, they have been plagued by somebody putting needles in strawberries. Yeah, yeah, I read about that. It's killing the industry. The theory is it's somebody who used to work for this farming company yeah, yeah, yeah. who's angry and putting needles in the strawberries. That's what I would think. Well, now a woman claims she found a needle in her McDonald's French fries. But, eh, not sure you're going to believe her. I may not believe her because I call shenanigans on all, I had already called shenanigans in my head and I thought, don't say anything yet, there might be (laughs) proof. So she goes to McDonald's and has a Happy Meal, finds a needle in her French fries. She freaks out, this is a meal meant for kids, what's wrong with you? Well, she gave some interviews. She made all these allegations. And then the detectives went to her house, and that's where they found her needles collection of 20, missing one. Yeah, okay. I think she, I think she might be busted. <laughs> now, she says, oops, my mistake. I'm really sorry. I must not have realized. And, of course, the other side of it is, she wanted money or fame, fame and notoriety and all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, shenanigans on that lady. Yeah. Packet of 20 needles, only 19 yeah. in there. And the strawberries. Strawberry over here uses needles, huh? <laughs> I don't know. And it only took uh, one man a couple days to decide 
to cut off his own arm in order to save his life. Myron Schlafman is 69 years old in mm-hmm. North Dakota in his garage making sausage using an electric meat mixer. He is removing a chunk of meat. He accidentally stepped on the pedal that powers it. It pulled his left arm into the device. Wow. He thought if he didn't do something, he would uh, bleed to death. Yeah. He I think cut- he's right about that. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, what's going on? He cut off his own arm. With what? Well, he was making sausages, so normally you've got other tools around yeah, yeah, you. Wow. Remember that guy cut his, his uh, hand was caught under a rock for yeah. a week? Wow, that's, I don't know if I could do it, man. Maybe when you feel yourself bleeding out. Yeah, if you think it's your only hope. It's even rough, man, to cut off your sausage. Oh, wait, to cut off your <laughs> hand because you're making sausage. Yeah. He said, I cut off my arm. I could feel my nerves jumping. If I had hesitated, I know I would have just bled to death. He applied a tourniquet. He uh, waited for people to arrive and help him. They were not able to reattach it. It was in a sausage grinder. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to make it into a patty, put a glove on it. He'll be outfitted with a prosthetic. And he said, well, I went through Vietnam. I can handle this. Yeah, you know what? Uh, uh, I think you could. I think you'd adapt. But you'd be bumming. Yeah. Like, you lost your leg. 20 years ago, I would think people with one leg only had it for like a year. And you can't tell. Yeah. They, were, yeah. they don't even walk with a limp. Then they go mountain climbing. This is all happening on my news, by the way. But, you know, they, 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 they've they adjusted really well, so this guy will be all right. Do you think you could cut off your own hand? I don't know that I could. It, no matter what I say, do I have to? <laughs> nope. Oh, then yeah, I could. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Easy. I could do it with my teeth. Very creepy story out of North Carolina. A woman's mother died in their home that they shared, and she didn't do anything about it. 69-year-old Donna Sue Hudgens tried to hide the fact that her mom was dead. And her neighbors were like, hey, you know, where's mom? Haven't seen your mom in a while. Like, oh, she's busy. She's busy. Finally, somebody did a wellness check. And turns out Donna Sue was curious about the stages of death and left her mom where she was so she could watch her decompose. Oh, you mean she was a nutcase? Yeah, she was a lunatic. You know, some people do this for a living. They have those animal farms where, or not animal farms, body farms, where you can learn from watching different stages of decomp. Yeah, that's not in your kitchen. Yeah, they're called they're called medical studies. Yeah. yeah, 69 years old and she's just curious. Super creepy, right? That is super, that is super creepy. Yeah. Colorado, a 10-year-old called 911 because he urgently needed help. He said, I'm under attack by long division. Oh, yeah. I need help. <laughs> Well, the operator, Chris Clow, said, some people have grown to think that 911 is just a catch-all. I need help for blank, and they just call us. In this case, the kid wanted to know what 71 divided by 3,052 was. Well, and I that said, kid can rot. I don't know. <laughs> I got a calculator. Well, the 911 operator said, I think you probably have it backwards. Is That's it what I thought. 3,052 divided by 71. The kid's like, oh, yeah. So oh, but you could do it the other way, right? You could, yeah. Yeah. Um, normally, for a 10 year old, that'd be right. a little too much. I'm just much, saying because but... my mind went crazy on that. And I went, wait a minute, you can do that. You can do long division of, of 3,000 into 71. Well, he helped the kid figure it out and said, I'm happy to help, but 911 is only for real emergencies. So only call us back again if you've got a real emergency. And uh, his But he par- did help him. He gave him the answer. He did. He helped him. He helped you know him. What? Walk Giving him, him the it. answers not help, Paul. Is that what you <laughs> wish I would do? Just give you the answers? No, you have yeah, to work it, it out with a pencil. <laughs> what do we know about old folks' homes these days? Sex like crazy. Yep. Oh, I was kidding. <laughs> no, they are having a lot of fun. Yeah. At a senior center in Madison, Wisconsin, the police were called after a woman working there found a bag full of white powder. Mm hmm. Well, the authorities arrived, and they said, huh, this is cocaine. It is cocaine. I wonder. Yes. Okay. They found a big bag of cocaine, and what they don't know is who is partying at the senior center. Oh, you should be able to tell. <laughs> Nobody came forward to claim their coke. Bunch of old people not coming forward. It's just all weird to me. They're all high on coke, chewing their bottom <laughs> lips, saying weird crap that doesn't matter to anybody. And another strange story out of Michigan. We've heard about a couple of these types of bars, uh, but now they are getting closed down. 
the bars that let you throw axes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I think there's one here still. I know that there was. I wasn't sure if, if it was still open here, oh. but I guess there are rules that you can't just get super <laughs> drunk and throw an axe. You can't? Then what's no. the point? Yeah, why would we go? Well, according to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission, they have shut down one of these axe-throwing bars because they were not being monitored. Axes were ricocheting off and hitting people. There were too many people in the lane. It's almost like a firing range where it's kind of supposed to be one or two people. There were like 10 people all throwing axes. And a lot of times you are supposed to uh, throw and then drink or shoot and then drink. Not the you other way You can shoot around. in this place too? No, and like if you can go to uh, shooting ranges, there are some that have bars, right. but you can't do it before. It has to be after. You have to drink after. Drink after. Yeah. So they have shut this place down, believe it or not. You ever throw an axe? I have not. Well, I mean. Paul, you got axes. Out, out in the wilderness, but not in a bar. Yeah, not not in a bar, not at like a target, but just tossing it no, at I'm, a tree or whatever. I've yeah. never done it in a bar either. I've never been to it a bar. It seems cool, though. The the um not not necessarily bar. Seems like but... Seattle's already got a lot of plaid, and you go into where the lumberjacks be, and it's gonna be plaid squared. Right. Paul, did you find one uh, here in Washington? Oh uh, yeah, Blade and Timber is the name of the place on Capitol Hill. It's on Capitol Hill. Yeah, right on Broadway. Why haven't we gone? I don't know. We'll have to make a field trip. Right. Oh, I'll Let's tell you because I don't want to go. <laughs> uh, you you've thrown an axe. You've told Several us times. before that that it's uh that it's easier it's to land the than same it looks. Way it, because actually you can and I I've never actually physically personally seen it done, but on news stories about this I've seen it done. If you miss with the first head of the axe, you can actually hit it upside down where the handle points up at the root yeah. and it'll still stick. But yeah, Joe Lando, a friend of mine that used to be on Dr. Quinn Medicine, when that was his whole thing. Really super yeah, handsome guy that threw an axe. So we went to his house with two axes a couple of times. It's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida Story of the Day. Yay! A man was arrested after getting stuck up on a roof of a convenience store in DeLand, Florida. According to video, the owner saw a head pop over the roof of his locked store. He heard a man say, I'm dying, I need help. So the owner called the cops, and the cops arrive and helped him down. He was no longer wearing a shirt, and they said, well, what are you doing? Uh, why were you trying to break into this, uh, store, this store? And he said, I was just thirsty. I wasn't trying to break in. And they said, really, you thought there'd be water up on that roof? And he said, I didn't even try to do it. It just happened, man. I wasn't trying to break in. They did not believe him. They took him to DeLand Jail. You know what? He's, not much is going to happen to that guy, to be honest. His crimes were in the future, really. Yeah, he hadn't done crime. it yet. He hadn't done it yet. So they, they really can't, you know, unless you use tools or something for prep, you're never going to be able to prove it. Even though everybody knows, of course you're on that roof to break in. <laughs> right. uh, I wasn't. I swear to God. What yeah. can you do? Oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. When we come back with music news, a big concert was announced yesterday with a date here in Washington. In entertainment, a huge comedy guy making a very strange real estate move. We'll tell you about that. Mm. And a lot of sports action, including an update to one of your beloved Seahawks next. Well, we've heard about a lot of bands who are doing a farewell tour. Paul Simon just wrapped up his farewell tour. Uh, we know uh, a lot of bands have said it's just too hard being on the road. Well, yeah, these are older cats. Paul Simon's uh, well yeah. over 70, right? Bob did, Seger just wrapped up. Did anybody know if uh, at any encore ever did Garfunkel go out on stage with them? Because he did it a couple times years ago. They thought he might show up he might. for this one. He did not. Ugh. They are not getting along right mm. now. And but they better hurry. <laughs> yeah, they haven't gotten along for years. Yeah, but I mean, they don't have that many years left. There were, you know, everybody's getting older by the second. I know they offered me a senior discount at Internal <laughs> Life yesterday. So Bob Seger just announced his farewell tour. Elton John has already announced his farewell tour, but yesterday he added 25 new North American dates, including one here in Washington. Uh, it's actually two here in Washington. The Tacoma Dome. September 17th and 18th. Oh, two nights. What year? Next year. Okay. <laughs> well, he's giving us some advanced warning, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going, what's the day's date? 
Yeah, today is the 27th. Ah, I missed his mark. You better play next year. Yeah, so next <laughs> yeah. September, 1718 Tacoma Dome, Elton John farewell tour. I was just about to say, I've never seen him live, and that's totally not true. I saw him at Angel Stadium, 1977, when he was still Stones and Feathers. That, that's the best. And yeah. Giant Shoes. Mm -hmm. And he did costume changes. He would like, <laughs> yeah. go off stage and his band would play. It was really cool. <laughs> The University of Minnesota will award the late rock star Prince an honorary degree to recognize his influence on music and his role in shaping his hometown of Minneapolis. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, he really did love Minneapolis. He absolutely loved where he came from. It always freaks me out when people that I admire, too, really love a terrible place. It's Minneapolis, <laughs> for God's sakes. And uh, Andrew Zimmern, who I also like, that does the food show, whatever, food destinations, and he just loves it there and talks about the Twin Cities all the time. Really? Yeah. I know a lot of people who love it. I have not spent any time. I've only been in, in their airport. I've never It was the first there. place I ever saw, uh, so this obviously a while ago, that had the sky bridges to connect mm -hmm. buildings together so you never had to go outside yeah. and had full-blown shopping malls underground. I'd never seen anything like that in my yeah. life. It seems cool, but then you realize, oh, there's a reason yeah, for that. because we can't <laughs> go outside. Yeah. So this university had actually planned on giving this to him before his accidental death in 2016. At the, so they never had an opportunity to. They'll be giving it to his sister. Uh, they'll be having a big ceremony, and students from the University School of Music will be joined by some special guest artists, including somebody called Jelly Bean Johnson. Wow. Really? I think your daughter might get upset someone's robbing her name, Paul. Yes, she should, yeah. Well, they added Johnson. <laughs> Which makes it weird. <laughs> yeah, it does. Ashton Kutcher yeah. is in the news for doing something might be a perceived as a bit strange this guy so far makes super smart moves he is like one of the first real investors in airbnb oh really, really? yeah oh no he, oh, wow. he's got like he's a 20 million dollar actor at most if you look him up he's got to have 100 million dollars got to because he just he's invested just... in everything he did was smart yeah well and he got in early on a lot of stuff like you said with investments yep. but you know made a lot of money on doing other tv shows that he wasn't a part of right well, Ashton Kutcher, who is worth, I don't know, Derek, how much is Ashton worth? $200 million. Okay. Check on the other guys from that 70s show. And they're rich because that ran a really long. Check out Vilda Ramadama Ding Dong or whatever his name is. <laughs> he's got 12 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. He's starring on NCIS now, so I think he's doing I, okay. I heard that. But Ashton Kutcher is letting go of one of his remaining connections to his ex-wife, Demi Moore, a house he owned with her daughter, Rumor Willis. Nearly 10 years ago, he and his then stepdaughter, Rumor, invested in a two bedroom, four bath house in Hollywood's Hills. Two bedrooms, four baths? Yep. Do these guys have Crohn's? <laughs> Rich people always have way too many bathrooms. Not they usually do. in a two bedroom home. Yeah, That's normally weird. it's like six bedrooms, 12 baths. Right. Yes, exactly. The house was purchased for just shy of a million dollars. 10 years ago? Yep. Wow. And. It was owned by both of them, and he terminated his ownership, signing over his share to Rumor. Just to be nice. What we don't know is if she gave him any money or if he said this was an investment for your future. Just take it. You were my stepdaughter. We don't know. You the can't terms. talk like that to a grown woman when you're her age. Aren't they about the same age? Yeah, about the same age. I think he's probably got a good 10 years on her. Um, I mean, Derek can look up and see how old is Ashton Kutcher. But at the time, as his stepdaughter, you know, a lot of uh, parents want to help their kid provide sure. for their future. So maybe that's what this was. I don't know. Yeah, they are 10 years apart. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Still, like, not much not for, enough a, for parents. a dad and daughter yeah. situation. Not enough to eat that million dollars or half a million dollars. And now, 10 years later, that house is four, maybe that seven. That house is yeah. definitely worth more for sure. Beginning in November, Conan O'Brien will hit the pause button on his TBS late night comedy show, but for good reason. He is heading out on the road for his first stand up comedy tour in almost 10 years. Really? Team Coco presents Conan and Friends an evening of stand up and investment tips. <laughs> I wonder if Jim the Flagger will join him. Yeah, maybe he'll be on tour with them. So this is interesting. Now, how much of this is legitimate? 
Well, that's the name. That's the official name of the tour. And confirmed talent, Rory Scovel, Dion Cole, Ron Funchess, Laurie Kilmartin, Marina Franklin, and others. I didn't hear a CPA after any of those people. They're going on the road with, with him. They're traveling. A group of hand-picked comedians for each performance. Oh, they're comedians. I thought they were like investment gurus or something. I don't think they're actually doing any investing. Ah, I think it's what they're saying. He's being fun, a funny name for his uh, comedy tour. Yeah, you might want to check the word <laughs> funny in the dictionary. Well, for those of you who do want to see Conan O'Brien and his comedy tour, there is a date in Seattle, the Moore Theater, December 11th, and tickets go on sale tomorrow. So he's just throwing money away. Maybe he wants to go out on tour. And I, he, has the, he has the money to throw away, and it's his. True. The care and feeding of 10 comics that travel with you and everything, you can't pay that at the door at the Moore Theater. Mm. You can't. Yeah, or the personal, merch table right? or whatever. It's just something he's up to. Last Thanksgiving, Netflix gave fans of bad movies and wisecracking robots something to be thankful for. They renewed Mystery Science Theater 3000 for 12th season. <laughs> And now it is coming back again this Thanksgiving. <laughs> November 22nd is when we get Thanksgiving this year. Oh, my anniversary. The and the day they shot Kennedy. This is all perfect. The third decade of Mystery Science Theater 3000. So while you say <laughs> people clearly like it. No, clearly. Don't, don't. I'm the outsider. I'm not saying, oh, I'm on the inside with this and we all agree it's stupid. No, it's a runaway hit. I think it's stupid. And let me point out. I've never seen it. <laughs> but I've seen commercials for it, or I saw other shows talking about it. Remember when there were shows that all they did was talk about other shows? Mm-hmm. I saw it on there, yeah. and it looked to me, and I stand by my <laughs> Those shows where they talk about other shows are still very popular. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the one not the one about The Walking Dead, but it's after... talk, Talking Dead. Talking Dead. Yeah. Talking Dead. That's then hugely there's, popular. There's Bravo, What Really Happened. I don't know that one, but what's that? Oh, that's a huge one. That's Which one are they, they talking about? That's all they talk about, all the different uh, housewife shows. Gotcha. With Andy, whatever his face is. Andy Cohen. Who's so rich. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know that was the name of the show. I know I know that one. I just don't watch. I don't know. I don't want to watch a show about a show. I want to watch a show. But they're Yeah, popular. no, I, I, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, we all agree. Just, and we oftentimes don't have time to watch the show and the show about the show. Exactly. A paperback copy of Lady, Lady Chatterley's Lover, used by the judge in the UK obscenity trial of the novel's publisher, is expected to sell for a huge sum at auction. So this was a book from 1960, or sorry, in 1960, was used to prosecute Penguin Books. They published this D.H. Lawrence book about an affair between a wealthy woman and her husband's gamekeeper. There was a lot of sex in this book. And in 1960, they thought it was too much. They are expecting this little paperback book to go for $20,000. Wow, my goodness gracious. That's a lot of loot. That is a lot of loot for a book. Well, it's got a lot of sex in it, so there's something to be said for it. (laughs) I've never read it. Anybody here ever read a romance novel? No. Oh, I read one by accident. How does it happen? You tripped and fell on. Several hundred pages of accidents. She tripped and fell onto a romance novel. <laughs> Nora well, that'll Roberts. Do that. Or horseback riding. <laughs> yeah, Nora Roberts is this author, and it's printed. It's a romance novel printed under the guise of a mystery. And I was like, oh, this is a good looking mystery. And I'm like, halfway through, like, there's a lot of sex for a mystery being solved. And that's when I looked her up and realized she's a romance novelist. The uh-huh. guy on the cover with no shirt on didn't really uh, nope. give it I, away. I got to tell you, the reason I, I asked is because I have, I have read one. Yeah. And, uh, or read some of one. Uh, and they're so, so dirty. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And they don't want to be so dirty to say that person, hmm, and then that person, hmm, and then... They the descriptions they feel make it better than saying the exact words are so much. She enveloped <laughs> yes. as what? Ew. Yeah. And it's funny to think about who's actually writing those. It's never who you think, like some smoking hot chick wearing skimpy lingerie. It's usually uh, women in their sixties or seventies or men. Do you there. know Danielle Steele? Danielle Steele. Yeah. What about her? Do you know her? Do you know of her? Yes, of okay. course. She. Uh, there's an article. Uh, on the internet, and Amy showed it to me, so I don't really know. It's called Why Why Daniel Steele is a Baller. And man, hey, so much money. She has yeah. an actual yeah. palace. And then just, <laughs> she likes to do things crazily upscale. Like, you know, she rides in carriages. Oh, yeah, it's kind of cool. I like her. <laughs> 
Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. We have got some big news about the Seattle Seahawks, but first let's give you Mariners tickets. They did have a loss yesterday, but what gorgeous weather we're having this week. So it was a spectacular night at Safeco Field mm-hmm. if you were there. And you can tell us the song that played during Mariners KZOK Music Trivia. Call us right now to win tickets to an upcoming game. Call 800-252-1025 right now. First person to tell us that trivia song will win tickets to an upcoming game. Up next today, Mariners range to the Seahawks. Wide receiver Doug Baldwin, who missed the last two games nursing an MCL strain yeah. on his knee, returned to practice yesterday. All right. That's, That's good great news. news. That, is, that is good news. Pete Carroll says the two-time pro bowler looked, quote, really good and appeared light on his feet, end quote. Uh, he did add that it's too early to deem him ready for Sunday's road game. They'll see how things go today and tomorrow. Now, uh, Softy will be joining us tomorrow, Softy from KJR, and he'll likely have more information. A lot of those guys go out and watch practice. Not only will have more information, but he'll say it really fast. (laughs) You get more information in five minutes from that guy. Linebacker KJ Wright still day-to-day after arthroscopic, arthroscopic knee surgery. And Pete Carroll says left guard Ethan Pochick and defensive end Dion Jordan are hopeful to play, but they did not practice. Practice. It's Thursday. I don't know what that means. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's Thursday well, Night that's Football. Thursday. Thing. I, I recognize the theme. <laughs> I wrote the lyrics. <laughs> Vikings at Rams with a 520 kickoff. Now, you may remember on Sunday, the Vikings got blown out in one of the most embarrassing football games in recent memory. Yeah. The L.A. Rams are on fire. Yeah, Gurley brought a whole uh, energy to that team. He did indeed, and they look fantastic. So tonight's game should be interesting. The Vikings don't want to get blown out, but can they beat the Rams? Probably uh, not. Don't get blown out by Gurley. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> 520 tonight. And for the first time in 50 years, number 75 will be back on the field for the North Texas Mean Green. The school published a video playing off the legendary defensive lineman Mean Joe Green's Coca-Cola commercial. Right. You remember that commercial, right? Sure. It was legendary. Well, the UNT junior defensive end Ladarius Hamilton is uh, starring in this, and Mean Joe Green arrives and tosses him his jersey with the retired number and says, here, kid, try this jersey. And the kid says, well, thanks, Mean Joe. It's a lot of pressure. Is the kid any good? Let's hope so, because he was selected to wear this jersey during the game. That is a lot of weight on his the real mean Joe Green gave it to him? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. So he took part in this whole thing, and this will be Saturday's game against Louisiana Tech. Apparently, this kid has the traits that they like, a leader, he's an advocate, and uh, does a lot of work for the Mean Joe Green program. If I'm going to get on board uh, NFL athletes that aren't anything like their rep, I got to go with Rosie Greer. Do you remember Rosie Greer? I know the name, but I he, don't. Football player, supposed to be the toughest guy in the league, mean, yeah. plays a little dirty. He also spent hours a day uh, doing needle needle point. Uh, so <laughs> he played tennis all the time, and when he wasn't playing, when it wasn't his turn, he'd sit on the thing doing needle point. And then when pictures came at him doing needle point, he made money at it. He started selling wow. those things, and uh, yeah, it was cool. I don't know how Joe Green is now, but when he played back in the seventies, they said he was mean on and off the field. Oh wow! And Snoop Dogg has many passions other than hip hop. Well, he loves football. That guy's like eighty, right? <laughs> Snoop Dogg's in his 40s, oh, loves thing. football, has been an ambassador to the game for years. He it was even... a coach of like a youth football team. Yep. And good ago. at it. Really yeah. good at it. He was unbeaten one season, I believe. He still runs a youth football league, but now Snoop says his son has walked away from football. Cordell brought us, quit football, and he went on Wendy Williams to talk about it and said he is actually very proud of his son for doing so. He said, my son is very smart for getting out early and maintaining his mind state. His son and Snoop, very worried about the dangers of CTE. So was he in the NFL? Did he get onto a real team? No, he quit UCLA's college football team and they expected him to go to the majors. They expected huh. him to be the real deal. Good on him. Is he going to follow in his dad's footsteps and get really high and rap? 
Probably. <laughs> That's what I would do. Matter of fact, I might do it right after the show, just as a salute to Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Hey, uh, coming up, we are going to give you a chance to go to the Seattle Thunderbirds and Kelowna Rockets game. That's right, baby. Hockey is back, and it's next Saturday night at the Assessa Showwear Center. We'll give you a chance to win those tickets at 720 this morning. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUI-OA. Well, I just want to remind everybody that uh, suffer through whatever the hell we're going to do, but be here at 720 to play Thunder, Birds, or Rockets, and you can win a pair of tickets to watch Seattle Thunderbirds take on the Rockets Saturday night at the uh, Assesso Showwear Center. The kangaroo is on the loose in Florida. Yeah. And that sounds like I'm saying something wrong. Like, oh, an alligator is <laughs> on the loose in Florida. No, it's it's a kangaroo. Yeah, I'm... they're not native to Florida, right? The no, kangaroo. they're not. You have to ship those babies in. Well, and you think, is that legal to have a kangaroo in Florida? And the answer is yes. You just have to have the correct permits. You can you can do that in most places in America. They make make you in some places jump through more hoops than other places. But you can have a lot of surprising animals in America. And then there's a lot of animals you can't have. You know, people have gotten into trouble for having snakes you're not supposed to have or having four snakes when you could only have two. I don't know why you'd want any. But, you know... Growing up, I was obsessed with koala bears. Yeah. My dad went to Australia and brought me home a little stuffed koala bear when I was really, really young. If you pinched its back, did its front paws open up? I had some of those, That too. was so yeah. popular when oh, I was yeah. younger, man. Everybody <laughs> had that. I bought some of those when we went to Australia a couple of years ago for my nieces because it just, I don't know, I thought they were so cute. Everybody was hanging from their noses and their earlobes <laughs> when I was in yeah. high school. But I remember being in I, probably fourth grade, and a girl at my school told me she had a koala, and I wasn't allowed to come over and see it. And I was devastated. All I wanted to do was see a koala. And I believed her. Why? Because I was in fourth grade. I was young and naive. How did I know you couldn't have a koala here in America? I don't know about couldn't, but you could definitely look at that little fourth grade girl and go, well, you're so lying. <laughs> you don't have that at home. Unlike me. When I have any exotic animal that I uh, can have, you know what I'm going to have? A liger. It's a cross between a lion yeah. and a tiger. Possibly the most dangerous animal ever. Absolutely. <laughs> well, at least that, according to Napoleon Dynamite, the liger kicks ass. I remember walking by this little girl's house every day thinking maybe she's going to invite me inside. Maybe, because she was really rich. That's so like, sad. It is maybe sad. She does. And then I realized... It explains a lot, but it's sad. She, yeah. She didn't No toys have and one. no koala No there. toys, no friends, liars. Wow. <laughs> I had plenty <laughs> of walk friends. Walk down the street several blocks in my <laughs> diaper and nobody cared. But I, I mean, I think to this day, I would have a koala if I could. You know, the fact that I went to Australia two years ago or a year ago, whatever, to hold a koala bear, that yeah. that's a little excessive. Well, uh, can we, uh, do, is there a magic bag involved with this? Because I would have all sorts of, uh, like I'd have a spider monkey, but then I'd say, oh, I want a spider, a spider monkey that doesn't poop. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> and I'm doesn't with you. throw it at you. That doesn't throw it at you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you want to you wanna use some magic and give them the, the muscle they need so that they can control it? No, I just want them to never poop. Okay. I want to change their biology. <laughs> so is spider monkey or is a liger the answer to if you could own an exotic pet, which would you choose? It's a silverback dape. Don't oh. try and put baby in a corner, man. I got lots <laughs> of things. But that's always been my favorite animal, the silverback dape, forever and a day. I would love to have that magic thing. It doesn't kill me. Yeah. Because yeah. it can rip your head off pretty like opening a, a pop. Just, oh, I took Danny's head off. That's yeah. bad. I thought I loved it. <laughs> All right, so we'll incorporate magic. You can have a silverback ape that won't kill you. Okay. What's like bad of a spider or monkey that doesn't know how, know how to poop? Yeah. All right, cool. All I'm right. in there. I love this game. What about you guys listening? If you could own an exotic pet, what would it be and why? Call 800-252-1025 or text in 90627.
you know, this is something that happens with extraordinary wealth. I, I know, uh, uh, let's see, there's a lot of rappers that have exotic pets in Saudi Arabia. Now, you're nobody unless you have your own leopard, which seems really weird. The yeah. question to you out there is, hey, if you could have any kind of exotic pet, what would it be? Call 1-800-252-1025 or text 90627. And we established you could use magic, right? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, Pat from Olympia texted into 90627. He would like a T-Rex. <laughs> So. Are you sure he doesn't mean the band? Because I can oh, just maybe. send him one of the albums. I got three. Uh, another texter wanted to remind us that over 50% of koalas have chlamydia and that you can uh, contract it. You can, even though you're a human, you can still get chlamydia from well, a koala. Should, wear, I don't believe that. You should wear that. protection, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you don't believe what part? That humans can get the koala chlamydia. Well, I think his uh, uh, percentages are off on how many percentage. I think it's well over 50% of, uh, yeah. of uh, what do they call koala koalas, bears, yeah. have, have chlamydia. And that's they're like, not bears, jelly bean They're not bears. Because exactly they don't meet the right. koalification. Plus, they wear a fur coat. And they <laughs> don't, what do they do? They don't meet the koalification. Thank you very much for that, jelly bean. <laughs> you got a funny kid. 800 252 1025. If you could own an exotic pet, what would it be? Rob in Louisville. Good morning. Hello, Rob. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Um, well, we've got a couple birds, but they're kind of stupid. But I would love to own a parrot that would be able to say all the good, dirty words. The good, uh, the good ones. Do you, do you have some extra spending money, Rob? No, I don't. I know uh, how much they go for. Because we all know I was going to even hike you up a little bit and tell you to go out and get the African Grey, a notorious talker. You can't shut your African Grey up oh statistically. Goodness. I would hate to tell a friend, especially a friend of the show, go spend $6,000 on a small <laughs> parrot and have it not talk. But statistically, African Greys are the big talkers. Rob, what do you have that you said your birds are, are, are dumb? Um... I think they're like parakeets, something like that. Well, which one of you is dumb if they know you're a person? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They might be a parakeet. I don't know. People love parrots. Yeah, and it might I be know... one keet, might be a parakeet. I don't know. <laughs> I know they're really expensive, and I know that they live forever, and then they suffer depression when their owner dies, but people love their parrots. Yeah. I, I do not. I've had a couple. Yeah. I've, I had. I'm and I, into it. I wouldn't. Uh, say I would love to have this pet, but it'd be kind of interesting to get back. I had an African pygmy owl, tiny Aww. little thing, but I had it very short while. It choked to death on a chicken head. Aww. It was eating frozen chicken head. Well, it was eating frozen chicken bodies because you don't want to alter them or anything. And then it died. Cho- you know what though? I never asked. What if it's like the dog is on a ranch now? Oh, your what parents, if my parents told are you that lying to me. Yeah, the, <laughs> oh, the, yeah, they killed it. The owl wasn't in my room one morning. I, mean, I get up out of my coffin and my parrot's gone. <laughs> or my owl is gone. Uh, Andrew and Kent texted in. He says he'd love to have a trained wolverine, trained to maul people to get on his nerves. <laughs> We and, are incorporating magic, so why not? Well, the, I don't know how much magic you have. Wolverines are vicious. They'll eat your friends. No, but to train it to attack when on command yeah. might yeah. need a little magic for I, that. You I'm know what? Sure. It's like wish it, putting your uh, three wishes and using one of them to make the less traffic. What? What? No, <laughs> you got to go for this. You could train your Wolverine. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, the dude who got mauled on stage in Vegas wishes there was some magic to take that part out. Siegfried or well, Roy? Or... He was actually a great magician, so he probably thought there was magic. <laughs> <laughs> he was wrong. Uh, I Jay... looked him up yesterday, by the way, to see really? how he was doing. Yeah, How's he doing? He's, he's not doing great. Oh, they try and put a smiling face on it, but it ain't great. Oh, Jay in West Seattle's along the same lines. He wants a honey badger. Those yeah, things are dangerous thing. yeah. too. Yeah, and they—I don't know—they're ferret-like, aren't they? No, they don't seem like they're that cute. Yeah, I don't and think they're all that cute. cute. Ferrets, ferrets are, cute. are, ferrets are yeah. super cute. They're too long, and their spines go wibbly wobbly. I've heard they smell bad because they look super cute. I see them in a pet store, and I want to take them home. You know don't what? In my vast fifty-nine years of experience, although not that much in my life, I was single. But I used to date when I was much younger in Los Angeles, and every girl I know had a ferret. What's the one, Tori, that uh, uh, takes dirt baths? Oh, a chinchilla. A chinchilla. They had those things all the time. And then next thing you know, the cage is empty and dad sits on a ranch. No. <laughs> now, Tori, we'll incorporate magic with you since you don't have a great track record for keeping <laughs> your pets alive. So the magic is they would survive? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, what's could... she going to do with all that extra freezer space? <laughs> <laughs> if you could own an exotic pet, Tori, what would you choose? I want a flamboyant cuttlefish. 
Is that right? Cuddle, no, cuddle it fish? is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want a cuttlefish. They have three hearts. They're really brightly colored, and the men disguise themselves as women. It's like owning Bowie. Can I? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so I like that. uh, have you ever eaten one? I've no. Ew, it, no. Oh my God, yeah. they're flat out the most delicious thing. Right. They're, oh, so they're so smart so good. too. They're so good. They're so good. They're not smart enough to stop me from eating them. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be on my plate all dead and seasoned. Aww. If you ever snorkel with a cuttlefish, it'll play with you and change its colors. It, right. They they yeah. are very very smart. I didn't know they had three hearts. Yeah, I didn't know they had three. All hearts. right, you but can have one. They, you can buy them uh, dried in packages in a lot of the uh, uh, different Asian stores downtown and stuff like that. You open the package, it stinks so bad. You think there's no way that this is good, yeah. and it's one of the best tastes oh. ever. Dried cuttlefish. Mm. Paul, if you could own an exotic pet, what would you choose? My farm definitely needs a couple of elephants. Yeah, <laughs> I love <laughs> elephants, and I was so bummed when uh, Ringling Brothers said, you know, they're going to take them out of the circus. Obviously, that was a bad call for them, too. But um, just uh, the fact that you were able to see these just beautiful creatures up close. Yeah. And, like, I need some at my house, for okay. sure. Definitely yeah, I, a couple of You know what I'm going to do? Dig this, because I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have an exotic pet and a get-rich-quick scheme. I'm going to get a full-grown, crazy rhino rhinoceros. Yeah. And then when somebody says, hey, I'll pay you $10,000 a gram for some of that horn, you just sand it off right there into like a jar or something. That's a whole hippos. I mean, the uh, rhinoceros is just fine, wondering what the yeah. hell I'm doing. Boom! Eight grand for that dust right there. Don't snort it here. Oh, Danny, can I borrow some of your no poop magic? Yeah, Because sure. I think I definitely need that for my elephants. Yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, there you thank go. you. Tony in Kapowson, if you could own an exotic pet, what would you have? Red panda. Oh, the red oh, pandas are so, so cute. cute. Although they look more like foxes, right, than yeah. pandas? Well, yeah, more even like a, a tr the trash panda, the raccoon. They the raccoon. Look like raccoon. They're just raccoon. so cute. He doesn't even need to give us an explanation. The reason is yeah, they're, they're just, just well, so cute. He does because he doesn't need to, oh, and I'll teach you to eat all my friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he just wants a red, a, a red panda. Derek, if you're going to own an exotic pet, what would you own? Komodo dragon. Ooh. It's the only living relative of the dragon family still in existence. You know, my brother Anthony had one when he was young. I swear to God, you could buy him. Really? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I bet it's you can't. Another anymore. word for him, if you look it up, another word for it is teg you. And that's what he had with it was a teg you from the Komodo dragon family. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you could have them just a kid. Well, don't don't taunt Derek. He might want to get well, one. Well, I don't know that you can do it anymore, but you could do it then. He had, it was just walking around his room. And Derek, they don't like breathe fire or anything, they're not real dragons. What? <laughs> no, I think they are real dragons. I think that's what they're called for a reason. Hey, thanks for the calls and texts. It is now time to play Thunder, Birds, or Rockets. Thunder, Thunder Birds, or rockets. rockets. You can win tickets for the Seattle Thunderbirds versus the Kelowna Rockets next Saturday night at the Assesso Showware Center to play and win. Call right now, 800-252-1025. Brian Adams on 102.5 KZOK. Hey, hockey is back, and we are playing Thunder, Birds, or Rockets for your chance to win a pair of tickets to watch the Seattle Thunderbirds take on the Kelowna Rockets next Saturday night at the SSO Showware Center. In order to win, you will have to correctly identify from Danny's clue if we are talking about a Thunder song, a Bird song, or a Rocket song. Yeah. Our contestant is Kevin in Maple Valley. Hey, Kevin, how the hell are you? I'm good. How are you, Danny? Good. I'm betting on you, sister. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. A couple quick questions. you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yes, I do. And do you understand the rules of the game? Yes. Here we go. This Thunderbird or Rocket song was the opening track of the 1975 breakthrough album Born to Run. And on early tours, the song was played only by Roy Bitten's piano and Danny Federici's, Federici's glockenspiel. Accompanied by their bosses' vocals and harmonica, there always seemed to be time to play this blue-collar anthem live since the concerts can run up to four hours long. Can you tell us, is it a thunder song, a bird th song, or a rocket song? A bird song. Well, that's I totally sorry. not right, man. And <laughs> sorry, I told man. you I was betting on you. Now <laughs> I, I have less money than I used to oh. have. Oh, I'm Thanks so anyway, sorry. Kevin. Yeah, thank you anyway, Kevin, you bastard. Cliff and Parkland, do you need Danny to read the clue again, or do you know the answer? I'm pretty sure I got it. All right. I'm going thunder. And just for thing, because you're absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Can you tell us what thunder 
Thunder Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boss, man. Very nicely done, Cliff. Congratulations, Cliff and Parkland. You've won a pair of tickets for the Great Seattle song. Thunderbirds versus the Kelowna Rockets next Saturday night at the SSO Showwear Center. Cliff's going to the Jeep winner's window in our lobby to pick up his tickets, and you guys have a chance to win again tomorrow at 720. And up next, we've got the big news of the day. And the big news of the day is brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Here's with the phone number, 1-800-DIVORCE. That's easy. Or go online to goldbergjones.com. There's a change headed to McDonald's, and I'm not sure, Danny, how you're going to feel about it. No, I'm already mad. <laughs> why change McDonald's? Yeah. It was great. Why, why do you mess with perfection? Yeah. They're getting rid of artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives and all of it will be new and natural except for one item, the pickles. The pickles? The pickles. The, the pickles, pickles are going to be unnatural? Well, they have to use, I guess, some sort of preservative wow. in pickles. Yeah. So they got meat and vegetables everywhere, but they don't. that doesn't need anything weird. But y- your yeah. pickles do. Because that's what pickling is. You're taking a cucumber and you're preserving it to right. make the pickle. Yeah, so that makes sense. You can't have a pickle without preserving it. Of course, right. Right. Okay, that makes perfect sense, Paul. Yeah, their spokesperson said there are different types of pickles available, but to keep the taste that our customers know and love, we have made no changes to our signature dill pickle. But they have been slowly but surely working to get rid of all the bad stuff, so to speak. Um, I like artificial colors. Me too. I don't want to know what the natural color of my hamburger is. I don't want to know what's in (laughs) off McDonald's, just to other food groups. Don't tell me what's in my chorizo. Just tell me it tastes delicious. I don't even know there's eyeballs in there. Who cares? (laughs) Yeah, they've been slowly but surely making changes. They're quarter pounders. They've been using fresh beef instead of frozen. The Big Mac sauce and the buns, everything, all of that, the um, ingredients have that, that are artificial have been removed. Including the American cheese, which I thought everything about American cheese was just artificial. Yeah. It, it, it is? If you ever look at the ingredients of American cheese. I never cheese, have. What's in there? Oil. Like, yeah. American cheese is one of those things, like, I call it guilty pleasure. Why isn't it called American cheese food, then, like other cheese foods? Like, uh, uh, what's that stuff you spread on? Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz. That's yeah. a cheese food product. Yeah. Why it, is an American cheese like that? It says it there on the package in really small letters. <laughs> it does? Yeah, like. This is a past. What do they? What do they call it? Uh, processed cheese. Food. cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will tell you this right now. You cannot make in my house a grilled cheese sandwich without American cheese. I agree. Yeah. If you all go gray or whatever the hell you're talking about, and you're using a, some kind of <laughs> bread, <laughs> I don't know that many for bread. You're not doing Wonder Bread and American cheese, a little butter yeah. on the outside to brown it. Yeah, I don't know what kind of American cheese they're using, but McDonald's making some changes. You probably won't even notice the difference. No, I will not. It's yummy. There is a video that has people talking today. Um, It takes place in New Zealand, and it's a kayaker out with a group of his friends. And one of them has a GoPro on. Are so they protesting anything? Because I no. hate those guys. I, go I think my friend Paul, don't you hate kayaktivists? Oh, I love the kayaktivists. You like the kayaktivists. Okay, yeah. I hate the kayaktivists. I knew it was one of us. So I, I hate the kayaktivists. I think it's weird when they do it like downtown in the middle of the street and block traffic. But oh, oh, yeah. Put them out in the water. They're fine. <laughs> well, these guys were not uh, kayaktivists. They were out just enjoying some beautiful weather, a beautiful area of New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand, right. So they are out um, kayaking when out of the blue... A seal emerges from the depths and hurls an octopus at this guy's head. All right, I will tell you that I would now be calling shenanigans on you and the seal and the sea lion and the guy and the, the I don't know how it fake news got involved. Yet I've seen this video. Yeah. One of the most amazing things ever. Because <laughs> yeah. I was discussing with Paul uh, where a lot of people say he doesn't want you there. That's his domain. So we smacked you. Paul yeah. and I both think he was like playing. Yeah. I thought it was pals. Perfect. Yeah. He's, he does pop him right in the face. Right but in it, the face. It looks like the seal certainly looks like he's having fun. But also the guy tries to give it back to him. Yeah. He falls into the water and he scoots it along with his with his oar. <laughs> yeah. That was very cool. What wound up being so crazy too, not only did he get smacked in the face with an octopus by a seal. Yeah, which is already crazy enough. Crazy yes. enough. 
but then it suctions onto his kayak yeah. and they his friends have to use their oars and everything to try to get the <laughs> octopus off oh, of wow. his kayak. I didn't, see that. I didn't see that part. I just saw the guy get maxed in the head. Yeah, I didn't really think about it, but the octopus is kind of like, hey, save me, save, save me. I don't want this seal to get me. Oh, I didn't even think of it that way. You know, he's way. attaching himself to the, to the kayak. Maybe they should have taken no, him the, with. the kayaker said, give me your hand. And then it got all confusing, so now he's dead. <laughs> oh, I posted this on KZOK.com. It looks like CGI or something crazy. It does. Like, it doesn't yeah. look real. Yeah. And I, I mean, it is, but it, it just doesn't, that doesn't happen in nature. Right. <laughs> Only because, like, normally because we're not there. Yeah. Right. I'm sure the seal octopus up. part happens in nature. All the time. Yeah. I saw Andrew Zimmern in an early on episode where he was in, I believe, somewhere in South Korea, where they eat the live baby octopus, the little ones, and you have to wrap it around a chopstick and put it in your mouth and like put it down your throat and do it really quickly. Otherwise, it suctions onto your throat and can oh. kill you. Yeah. I'll pass. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you want? You eat weird food, Danny. Is that something on your list? Well, I worked in Japanese restaurants for years, and I, I speak enough of the language to where we were pals. I've eaten a fair amount of living stuff. Yeah, I feel I, weird about it. They gave me what they called a samurai dinner one time, ooh. and they just put a, like an ice pick like thing through this lobster's head, and oh. then we just ate it while it was really oh, mad geez. at us. Wow. And the president of a college are... He is in trouble. The president of Southeast Missouri State. They can't even tell where they are. <laughs> <laughs> president Dr. Carlos Vargas. That's an Ivy League school, right? Southeast Missouri State. You know, it's not a bad. It's not a bad school. Really? Ivy not does Ivy. not grow in that state. <laughs> <laughs> Kudzu, Kudzu State. But we here in Washington know very well how big college football is. Yeah. Every weekend. People are in purple or they're in their they're red, getting ready to support their team. Well, this guy was doing the same thing. The president of the university went tailgating, getting ready for the big football game. Well, he did a beer bong. And <laughs> the president of the college was doing a beer bong. Yep. See, I find that good. I'm a fan. Yeah. You know, you're there with your students. It's one beer. No matter how you ingest it, you'll be fine. You could yep. even drive home after one beer. And he did it to hang with the kids. He had a, a beer bong, and the kids were all hanging out with him. Yeah. He has now issued an apology saying he shouldn't have done that. And the students said, you should not be apologizing. You should not be. It's a, they, you have my vote for not apologizing. It's a bonding moment. Yeah, with, and with taken. Students, yeah. Nobody got inebriated. As a matter of fact, he was there as kind of a chaperone if they were going to go too far. <laughs> They're all putting eye drops of lysergic acid in each other's <laughs> beer bongs. But now it stops because that president doctor dude did stuff. President Doctor. What kind of fake title is that? <laughs> President Doctor, dude. That's his full title. Sony has made a big announcement that cross-play between PlayStation 4 and other platforms is headed to Fortnite. They posted a big statement on the PlayStation blog, and they said that this is the path forward. And I'm sure that the one person in the room who knows exactly what this means is our friend Derek. Yeah, this was a pretty big deal. So Fortnite is available on multiple platforms, computer, Xbox, Nintendo, um, cell phones, and all of the other platforms aside from Sony were cross-play compatible. So What does that mean? You if could you're play... on Xbox and you want to play with someone on Nintendo or ah. on their iPhone, you could all play together. People on Sony's PlayStation could not do that. And that was a decision by Sony to not play ball with all of the other companies. Yeah. And they caught a lot of flack for it in the gaming community for not being part of this program. And so they finally changed their tune on this a little bit and have said, okay, we're going to find a way to make it work. And they're in beta testing for it right now. Nice. Wow. Well, I can tell you right now, your whole beta thing's not going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to pull them in about three months. The VHS is going to come along. VHS is the future. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even Laserdisc. Yeah. Oh, I remember Laserdisc. <laughs> How and then many they of had us? picture Laserdiscs, like picture albums. Oh, yeah. With, with what movie you were watching on. It's crazy. <laughs> How many of us have been traveling, been on an airplane, realized your phone was losing power and you needed to charge it? Sure. Yeah. You know, you see it at the airport all the time, people clamoring to find a place to charge it. And yeah. people would just be sitting on the floor around an outlet. Well, one man on a flight decided he needed to find a place to charge his iPhone. Well, he went to the cockpit. Really? Guess where you can't go. <laughs> you cannot under any. So you can't even go to the bathroom while that door is unlocked. No. Well, guess what he was? 
Arrested, I would hope. Drunk. Well, Drunk. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, yes, arrested. He couldn't get there. Was he, were they in flight? They were in flight, and he walks towards there, and he's, like, uh, trying to enter the cockpit. He's grabbing the door, and yeah, he's he pulling it. And they said he created, quote, pandemonium. <laughs> yeah, I guess, because some people are really afraid of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's uh, the reason you can't unlock that door while the pilot's in there is kind of 9-11. Mm-hmm. They were yeah. out negotiating, hey, let us go. I'm going to kill this lady, and which they did, by the way, which is horrifying. But then now there's all the super locks, and you can't go anywhere near yeah. the pilot's door. That's the big news of the day, brought to you by Goldberg Jones. Divorce for men, 1-800-DIVORCE or online, goldbergjones.com. And coming right up, it's Sarah's Filthy Forecast. It's Sarah with your filthy forecast. Oh, it was so hot yesterday. Why I had to rip off all my clothes and thrust myself into a cool shower. You'll get licked by the sun's rays <laughs> there you go. again today. There's one special spot I like the sun to lick me. Oh, oh magic geez. temperature today, 69 degrees. <laughs> it seems like it happens more often yeah, than it does, not. Really. <laughs> Even hotter and sunnier tomorrow. A threesome for Saturday. Who's got a swimming pool and an open mind? You're going to want to cool off because the sun will be nailing you three days in a row. I'll always keep you abreast of the weather. Join me next time, big boy. With the best weather front in Seattle. Big boy? (laughs) What are you, a 1940s hooker? How are you doing there, big boy? Coming down to the docks. That was, in fact, Sarah's uh, filthy forecast. We have more going on with Sarah and stuff. If you know, tomorrow morning, right around the same time, 7.50 or so, if you know where Sarah's beaver's been, call the show and win stuff. It's a pair of tickets to Bob Weir and Wolf Brothers. Dig that. October 23rd at the Moore Theater. If you could get your money for nothing, wouldn't you? Well, it's money for nothing, and it's back at KZOK. And 13 times a day, you've got a shot at winning 1000 bucks. Just listen for the new keyword and text that to 200-200, and your next chance to win is only minutes away. Well, we uh, found out that Megadeth are going to be doing a cruise like New Kids on the Block and there was a kiss cruise. I bet if Megadeth heard you say it's just like the new kids on the block cruise, <laughs> they, they would take umbrage with you. Yeah. It's it's nothing new, I guess is what I'm saying, that a lot of bands have been doing this for many years, and they sound great. Uh, some of them, it's more collaborative because maybe the band isn't big enough to do it on its own, so they'll have other bands right. join along. Like the kiss cruise, they're they're okay with it just being them. But is it just them? Because they always seem to have other people. Leonard Skinner, I thought it was going to be the Leonard Skinner cruise, and it's not. It's the Mm-mm. Southern Rock cruise. Yeah. And then Molly Hatchet is on there. There's a bunch yeah. of it. Where, where uh, 38 Special, where uh, Leonard Skinner could sell that boat out, I would think. Yeah, I think it's a bigger burden, too. If it's just you, yes. then it's all you're the performer all the time. If you've got a bigger lineup, First of all, it's more fun, but then it's not you performing every night. Leonard Skinner, they're older, they're probably tired. And it's also, they, you know, I've seen a couple, of, a couple of these in my day, and when the acts try and go use the boat as a boat, go down to dinner or go lay by the pool, it's a hassle yeah. for them, you yeah. know? So the more bands, I guess you can split up the audience. And we've seen this with um, uh, the old TV, the old radio station, Air America, did one. And it was all the hosts, and it was all political-based. So people who had that interest could go on this cruise and hear, um, what's the woman on MSNBC's name? Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow or... Al Franken. Al Franken, uh, Ron Reagan. Yeah, I've I've seen it with like a comedy cruise, too, where it's comedians. I've I've seen that. Some of them sound interesting. Some of them do sound interesting. I mean, if you were going to go on one, whether it exists or not, is there one you can think of you'd like to do? Yeah, it'd have a theme. It'd be called That 70s Cruise. Oh. And the reason I picked that is I get to go on a cruise and make money because apparently I was popular in the 70s. <laughs> it's like uh, the, those silly little serious radio stations. If you did anything in a decade, they give you your own channel. Yeah. Well, yeah. they are, this is a real offer that I once got. I was probably talking to you guys with it with Barry Williams from the Brady Bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to go do That 70s Cruise. Get an owner's suite and like four grand. 
Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. fun. But I had to tell Barry, some of us have jobs. Yeah. He's not working as much <laughs> as you are these not. days. Well, you guys listening, whose cruise would you love to go on? There's the 70s cruise with Danny and the Partridge family and the Brady Bunch and Megadeth, New Kids on the Block, Kiss Cruise, real or imaginary, whose cruise would you love to go on? Call now, 800-252-1025. All right, so here's the thing. Megadeth is joining the numerous people that have their own crews. New Kids on the Block sells out all the time. They have, they're just their own branded crews. So this question is for you. Whose cruise would you love to go on? Call 1-800-252-1025, or you can text to 90627. Good morning, Rob and Gig Harbor. Hey, Rob. Hi. Hi, Danny. Everybody, you guys, and Alessa. <laughs> I sell my soul to see David Boyd live. And sit in the front row on a cruise. Well, you're not the only guy. I'm pretty sure David Bowie would save his soul to see him live. Uh, I had the pleasure of seeing uh, Bowie. Uh, 1977 was a big year for me, and it was worth it. Everything that you think, uh, I mean, it wasn't crazy and elaborate stuff except for his clothes. The coolest thing about a David Bowie cruise for me is I like to dress up in weird stuff, and not the weird stuff you see at work. I have way weirder stuff that you guys don't even know about. I would love to get all glammed out, be 60 years old, walking around the poop deck (laughs) with all my glitter on. Seems bitching to me. Well, it would be fun about the Bowie cruise, too, is you could have different themes in all the different halls. Oh, yeah, you could. You know, different times in his career. You'd never get bored. Thin White Duke is on whatever, the the Aloha deck. Right, exactly. Ziggy is wherever. Right. I like it. What about you, Brian and Bremerton? Whose cruise would you love to go on? Hey, Brian. Hi. um, I think it would be fun to have a... Willie Nelson, Jamaica Cruise. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're doing on that cruise. You know, yeah, you definitely. can do it a lot of places, too, because he has a really nice home that he's spending more and more time on now that he's in his 80s. Uh, you could do it around the islands of Hawaii as well with sure. Willie. That would be super fun. I'm learning uh, one of his songs right now called Whiskey River because I'm doing a theme about booze songs. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I could do that on the Willie Nelson uh, Cruise. Thank yep. you, Brian. You're performing on the Willie Nelson Cruise? I am. Why not? Why, yeah. why not? Why not? I use magic. I don't poop. Wait, no, that was the gorilla. <laughs> Sorry. Whose cruise would you love to go on is the question we're asking at 1-800-252-1025. Good morning, Farmer Ted in Seattle. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? We're all good, man. What do you got? I got two. One would be the NFL Hall of Famers cruise. That's a good one. The other would be the uh, Playboy Playmates cruise. (laughs) Now, we've got some real live uh, um, NFL guys running around this floor because of the KJR radio station. Do you think you could take nearly as many people? Is if you oh, had a bunch of, of the weight yeah, requirements. Well, that and they're just giant. You got to pass them in the yeah. There's a yeah. couple of guys down there that That's are true. six five, two eighty. Yeah. Easy. That's not a. I don't want that guy on the left side of the boat unless there's his twin That's brothers on the right side of the boat. <laughs> right. All right. So mine is similar to Farmer Ted's. I am going to have a cruise to the Dominican Republic, and it's going to be the Nelson Cruz cruise. And it's going to be all baseball players, and we're going to have like all name Nelson, Nelson Cruz. No, but it's <laughs> or he gonna gets be, to bring some friends. It'll be Nelson Cruz and his friends. Yeah, because there are a couple of other Dominican baseball players. A That's few a of joke. them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know you could have a, a like a home run derby? Yeah. Because, oh, that'd be cool. Well, it's it's a real life thing that you could because there's a couple of things that go something like this. But you have a couple of the crew in a boat at the uh, you know 300 feet or 300 yards, whatever it is, off the back of the boat. And you go, they go and collect the balls. It's super fun. Yeah. I've seen them do Same that thing with, with golf, golf calls, yeah. right? Yeah. Plus, the Nelson Cruz cruise would be much more fun than Ted Cruz cruise. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think Nelly would be on board with that. <laughs> the cruise cruise. <laughs> Tom um, Cruise cruise. Jo- yeah, Josh from Bothell texted in at nine zero six two seven. He wants to he wants to be on the Tom Cruise, which is Tom Hanks and uh, Tom Hiddleston and uh, other Toms, oh, but not famous, Tom Cruise. Famous Toms, the Tom Cruise. He didn't invite Tom. He didn't cruise invite on Tom. Tom. Cruise. That's a great idea. And then the Tom Cruise can be the surprise guest. That shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Cruise. <laughs> That's pretty clever. Uh, good morning, Kozak and Sumner. Hey, Kozak. Good morning, you beautiful people. What's up, buddy? So I would like to do a uh, kind of like a Halloween-themed uh, cruise. Uh, we guys were talking about the Transylvania 
trip. Yeah. Uh, for staying in the. Now I love that idea, uh, but I, I'd like to uh, go with something even like more dark and stuff like that, like Mask of the Red Death, sort of thing. Interesting. I bet people would eat yeah. that. Up. They love that stuff. Murder. Oh yeah, bites. yeah. I think Kozak's a psychopath. That's what I. Think. <laughs> yeah, but you've been on those, Mask right? of the Red Death cruise. What? <laughs> yeah. The Telltale Heart, and you have to go under the floorboards of all the different uh, decks to find who buried a heart there. Edgar Allan Poe. No. <laughs> I don't think you should be pulling up the floorboards yeah, on in a boat. boat. Yeah, <laughs> that's not very smart. Just because that raven is rapping, tapping, tapping on your door with Ed Ground Poe. By the way, if he gets online, you you got to call the Popo. And now it's Ed Ground and Popo. Po. <laughs> Good morning, Jeff in Seattle. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah, I'd like to take and uh, have a veterans cruise where it's nothing but veterans. Well, it's a it's a lovely thought, nice. and to uh, to give away this to to veterans who have served this country well. Yeah. Here's the problem with that. None of us can really go. No, we wouldn't be invited. We couldn't go. They we, could go. Well, I mean, they could I invite us could on their cruise to be the entertainment. Sure. Otherwise, yeah, I don't I don't know that because I'd feel like I usually feel pretty good about myself. Uh, but you're with a bunch of veterans you know, who gave as much as they could. Mm -hmm. And you just go, oh, so you're a disc jockey. I can't <laughs> That's not a real thing. the name of the organization, but they were flying uh they are flying veterans from all over the country to go to Washington to see the veterans um, memorial, the Vietnam memorial. And uh, all the different memorials that they have in Washington, and it was—I uh, I remember it. I cannot for the I life of me think what the organization was. But, but the, some people who weren't veterans did go to help. Oh, sure, you'd have to. They, yeah, they, a lot of those veterans were, were in big trouble. Yeah. The, the only thing—the thing they were saying—the uh, undertone of that was a lot of these guys aren't going to live to see it if they yeah. don't go right now. Yep, yep. So we could go in a, just a different capacity. Mark, calling from Sumner, whose cruise would you like to go on? I would love a Pink Floyd comfortably numb tour. Yeah. There you go. All right, good. Is that a relapse <laughs> if I do it on your boat? I think, you know, no. if we're 12 miles out yeah, at sea, doesn't count. I get as high as a kite. Nobody can hassle me. <laughs> you hear that, Amy? Next time we're on a boat, you might want to check my <laughs> luggage. I bet she has different rules for that than she we She has do. all sorts of rules, man. Jennifer in Seattle, you're going to go on a themed cruise. What would you like to go on? Hey, good morning. Morning. Uh, definitely Pearl Jam to Alaska. We can all wear our flannel. We can wear our Doc Martens. Rock out every night. I love it. All right, I like that too. I like uh, one, uh, the, yeah. kind of the Kids Are All Right cruise that uh, you've been saying it by name over and over again. The Who's Cruise. Like you yeah. said the third time you said, oh, <laughs> Who's Cruise? Oh, the Who, yeah. that's, that's Who's, who's cruise. cruise. That's a great idea. Roger uh, Daltrey all singing. Roger. Tim and Everett, Who's Cruise? Who would you like to go Say. on? <laughs> um, the Joe Bonamassa keep blues alive, but Tori would have to go with me. Well, yeah, that goes with, that goes without saying, man. Uh, Tim I'll wants to you, go on any cruise. Tori would go. On. I would go on that because I actually wrote down when we were talking about this a guitar playing songwriting cruise where people get together in mm -hmm. big numbers and write songs and stuff together. That yeah. guy, if you're going to be learning guitar, that would be a good yeah. guy to learn it from. I'm not sure that would be Tori's choice, though. Tori, what would you choose? I'd do a Marie Antoinette cruise, and everyone dresses up like they're in the 1700s and eats cake. That would actually be really fun. <laughs> it would be really fun, <laughs> it right? Until crazy. the ending. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hopefully she'll stop the cruise before then. Then I'll be romantic, too. And me and Amy, we're going to take the Romeo and Juliet cruise. What do you mean <laughs> they die in the end? <laughs> Paul, what cruise would you like to go on? Uh, everybody knows I'd be first in line for the Kansas cruise. But sure. It's not very fun cruising around Kansas. <laughs> There's not a whole lot to see there. So I think I'd like to go on a Cirque du Soleil cruise oh. with like the Cirque show going on all around the boat. I think it would be pretty awesome. They, they have stuff kind of pretty close right now. Yeah, I, I think you fun. can book a circus cruise, yeah. Derek, what cruise would you like co to go on? I would like to go on a little cruise with Lil Wayne, Lil Yachty, Lil Kim, Lil Bow Wow, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Pump, Lil Peep, Lil Baby. <laughs> he, he had to have made up at least seven of those. <laughs> He's like, Let's see. There are two extraordinarily white guys in the room. I'm just going to make up some names. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those are all rappers. Uh, That's a heck of a cruise. Like half of them yeah. are rappers. Thanks for the calls and texts, everybody. We will be back in just a few minutes with all the news you need to know. One person was critically injured in a shooting in Seattle's Rainier Valley early this morning. Seattle police say the shooting happened around 3 o'clock on South Willow Street. A man in his 30s was taken to Harborview with life-threatening injuries. And according to police, the gunman is on the loose and there is no suspect description nor any word on what led up to the shooting. <laughs>
Four family members managed to escape a two-alarm fire that heavily damaged their home in Kent early this morning. This happened about 4 a.m. 911 received calls of flames shooting from this home. When firefighters arrived, they found the entire front of the home engulfed in flames, along with two cars burning in the driveway. They were working to douse the flames on the first home, but then trying to stop it from spreading to the adjacent homes. So all of the humans are out. We are still awaiting an update on the dog. So we don't know for sure even if the dog was in there. Uh, we just don't know if the dog ran away or if the dog is has perished. The firefighters haven't completely cleared the scene. Good. They took my advice. Don't rush into a burning building yeah. with yeah. the dog. No matter how much you love the dog. You know, when people say, oh, these dogs are our babies, unless they are incapable of having babies and you just think, well, that's it's sad, but okay, if you want to do that. Mostly, I think you're a crazy person if you refer to your dogs as your babies and mean it. <laughs> and then, you know, put them in a little uh, bonnet or anything. I just think that's nuts. Yeah. The U.S. government estimates that 80,000 Americans died of the flu and its complications last winter, the highest death toll in the last four decades. 80,000? 80,000. My goodness. That's what was the what was this of the record before that? Forty thousand. The record before that was um, in recent years. They say its worst year was fifty six thousand in nineteen sixty six to sixty seven. That was what the worst one on record. Right. That doesn't c- account for twenty eighteen, which was the worst, the worst. flu epidemic of worst. half a million people. But considering this seemed like just a flu season, yeah, yeah, not something. This bad. Did you I mean, guys get your flu shots the other day? Not yet. No. Did you know yet. the station was given away free, uh, right here I, in the hall. I didn't know the station didn't was given away. Yeah, not uh, but the, uh, not this station. iHeart Radio or whatever they're called. Yeah, everybody was running around. Well, was where is everybody going? They said we're going to get our flu shots over in the theater. Why didn't oh. they tell us? They didn't send an email or anything. No. That's bizarre. Well, they said this winter is expected to be very bad as well. So to get yourself a flu shot, even though this past winter, part of the problem was the flu shot was inefficient. It hardly worked at all, but working some is better than not having a flu shot and it working none. So get a flu shot is the recommendation from the CDC. India's top court has ruled adultery is no longer a crime striking down a 158-year-old colonial-era law, which, according to most, said it treated women as male property. Previously, any man who had adult relations with a married woman without the permission of her husband had committed a crime. And I think that's fair. That you can ask for permission to have relations with someone's no, wife? No, the part where if you have sex with my wife, you've committed a crime. <laughs> That's something because for if the I government go, to right, control? So I come home and there's Paul and Amy going at it. Yeah. And I pick up a bat or something and I max him right in the head because he's boning my wife without my permission. You've committed a crime. Right. Assault. But I shouldn't I have. have you should have committed a crime. That's no. why I'm protecting my, my family just, from you. Just having a good time. I don't well, then you don't know. <laughs> There's the, I mean, you think that the government should be deciding who has sex with your wife? I'm just saying it's a crime. And no, it's a weird way to put it, Paul. The government should not be deciding who has sex with my wife. With my wife, without me saying it's okay, you've committed a crime. <laughs> so Paul goes to jail because he had adult relations with Amy? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't go to jail. I was beaten with a you with weren't. A be- oh, no, you weren't think... beaten to death. And the judge okay. said I was within my rights to hit you in the head the one time. And then they put you in jail for three <laughs> oh, years. Oh, we don't both go to jail? Oh, you no, don't go I've to done jail nothing for... wrong. You're a complete and terrible <laughs> Assault person. Assault with a deadly no. weapon? It was your assault that made me mad. <laughs> All right. They also struck down a law which had effectively criminalized gay sex in India. So they are they are starting to finally uh, evolve, right? Be more modern. Which so now the guy that can sleep with my wife is also a girl. Yes. All right, they're coming around over there in India. <laughs> and we have heard a lot since the legalization of weed about crimes, people trying to bust into pot shops. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, in one case, in Colorado Springs, they grabbed as much as they could carry. They broke in. They, they uh, slammed a stolen van right through the front doors. They grabbed as much as they could carry. They abandoned the van. They fled. They were stoked until they realized it wasn't weed. It was oregano. <laughs> Why did the pot shop have a bunch yeah. of oregano? Decoy? A display case, just like a jewelry store has yeah. fake diamonds. Oh, wow. They had oregano. The cases are just for display, does not contain the real thing. They had no clue. They did a smash and grab and got oregano. Well, 
you know, it's not a complete waste. They were cooking for friends that night. <laughs> God, I bought oregano when I was a kid. I remember that. Yeah. Or the substance that everybody told me was oregano. I think that was one of those things people just said. Anything you bought that wasn't really marijuana. Oh, you bought oregano? But right. Whatever it was, I bought it. In Japan, Osaka police have arrested a fellow police officer for doing something creepy. All right. This 22-year-old police officer was filming up women's skirts. So he was on patrol, and he saw a lady who piqued his interest. She starts walking up a, a staircase, and he puts his camera underneath and starts taking pictures. Somebody saw him and proceeded to assault him, like try to do a citizen's arrest of a police officer. Other cops arrived at the scene, and he confessed to his crimes and his being jailed now yeah jailed is out there they're doing i think it sounds fair you ever get behind a lady on an escalator or a pair of stairs or something like that in one of those ridiculously short skirts i have yeah what do you do uh i, I mean i try not to look up i her make skirt. i yeah. make a overt weirdness of not looking at her yeah you know it's not my fault we all just got on the escalator oh that's what it was an escalator we all just got in the escalator and i'm going oh i just saw your underwear oh my god well, i'm gonna be arrested at the top of this thing it's terrible <laughs> and you want to know a super whammy secret thing these chicks are up to What's that? Shorts under the skirts. Yeah. yeah. They're not underwears at all. And you know why they do that? Because <laughs> you're, you're behind them on the escalator. That's exactly right. Good idea, too. <laughs> New Jersey might want to invest in a spell checker after its latest sign mishap. The State Department of Transportation in New Jersey along Route 37 reads, Lavalette, keep left. However, the town of Lavalette is spelled wrong. Oh, well, I can't spell it. Yeah, me either. L-A-V, love, A-L-E-T. Maybe even T-T-E. Oh, I'd go T-T-E for sure. We're going T-T-E. It was spelled T-T-E, oh, but there are two L's in lava let. So L-L-E-T-T-E. Well, that's, no, that's not fair. That's Yavalet. Huh? You, you know, it's same thing with my friend Lloyd. That's why I don't <laughs> ever talk to him anymore. L-L-O-I-D. This is about the fifth time they have misspelled a letter in their own town's names this year. They should change the name of the town then. Yeah, to China <laughs> Air. Yeah. Aren't they misspelling their own signs? Uh, yeah, there was a Chinese airline that mis- that misspelled. Or it yeah. was um, not Qantas. What's no? The... It's whatever it is. They were misspelling yeah. their own yeah, name on their airplane. We just did a story on it. Cathay Pacific. Yeah, yeah. It wrong. they put an F in it or something. So yeah, Parsippany was spelled Parsipani. Yeah. Pattenburg was Pattenbug. So not even just... That one I would have got right. Yeah, and by yeah. the way... <laughs> if you gave me the patent. Are people part. really spelling this wrong, or is it vandalism? No, it's spelled wrong on the signs, and right. the DOT is mortified, and it's expensive. Those signs cost yeah. a whole lot of loot. I want a whole lot of loot. Sorry, Zeppelin is in my soul. <laughs> Two bizarre incidents were reported by motorists in St. Louis, and different times, different locations, their vehicles were struck by bowling balls as they were driving. Oh, that's not good. Well, how many points do you get for a car? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I think maybe both of you admitted to doing this, but when you're a dumb kid, you uh, could have put a rock over a bridge, an overpass. I never did that. I did the fake rope thing where yeah, you stand on the side of the road. Thing. Yeah. Well, there's the whole. What else did you do to the fake fight thing? Uh, what, what's the We'd fake have fight? a fake fist fight with your friend on the street, rolling around where, wherever it was you did it, in a store or yeah, whatever. Yeah. We did that. We have fake fighters. In this case, the hope is that it's kids who will realize how dangerous it is. Uh, it seems worse to think that it was an adult because an adult knows how bad Plus it is. Plus, it's so mean. You should spare the Cadillac. <laughs> huh? huh? See what I did there? That was a strike. No, that one didn't work. It worked as well as mine. You're fine. An injured box turtle at the Maryland Zoo is getting help thanks to a very outside-the-box thinker. This turtle was found by a zoo employee, and it had multiple fractures on its plastron. Not on its plastron. Yeah, no, right right on. If you looked at his plastron, you'd go, that's on there. <laughs> plastron is the bottom part of his shell. Of course it is. Yeah, Danny yeah, and I knew we that. Yeah. Yeah. We could have told you that if you'd given <laughs> us, a given us a little break. <laughs> now, when you watched Bugs Bunny. Plastron. What's the, what's the other one with the uh, Wile E. Coyote one? That, Looney Tunes? Yeah. You know, you would see the. The turtle and it would get scared and run out of its shell. Yeah, yeah, sure. But that doesn't actually work that way. The shell, to, shell is built on. It's part yeah, of their Yeah, because of the plastron. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you see it on the plastron. <laughs> yeah. 
So the plastron was busted up, and they said, what can we do? Uh, we can't figure out what we could do for you this little turtle. eat it. Oh. They made yeah. Make a, soup out of it, man. Plaster. Not a box turtle. Why not? What do you know about... You're, first of all, you're a vegetarian. Yes. What do you know about cooking turtles? <laughs> because I know you. those aren't the kind you cook and eat. These are pretty small, and they're super cute. Yeah, oh, you just like said dumplings. You said soup right there. Right there. Right. <laughs> it's on your mind. They built it a Lego wheelchair. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> they built an entire wheelchair out of multicolored Legos. And they said that this turtle is about the size of a grapefruit. And this little Lego frame surrounds his shell and is on four little Lego wheels. And so his, his legs are bad, too? It's not just a shield? It's the bottom, yeah. and he can't support himself because uh, his bottom uh, is broken. Oh, okay. I didn't completely get that. When I think turtle shell, I think of the whole thing on his back. Yeah. Yeah, the, the bottom right. part is the postron. Which is softer. Yeah. So he's okay now, wheeling around in Legos. He's so cute. <laughs> How, do they you. push him around? How does, oh, his, front, his, his front, front feet work and yeah. his back feet don't or something? He does this. <laughs> Some good radio there. I mean, I want to see it. Yeah, me too. I would laugh at I him. still want to eat it. You yeah. can tell me you can't eat it and it's the wrong kind of turtle and I would still eat it. <laughs> no, that's a dairy cow. It's full of steaks. I don't care what you say. First responders found the owner of a burning home outside the building with a cooler yelling, that's my house. The man was sitting there with his cooler full of beer, imbibing. 32-year-old Pike Stillwagon is now being charged with arson. They say he was acting erratically, decided to get some kerosene, light his house on fire, and take the beer cooler outside to watch it go down in that's, flames. That, that's such a weird thing. Like, I get burning <laughs> your stuff down if it's insured or whatever it is that we, they made you do it. I mean, I can't agree with you or anything. But don't stand there with a cooler. That's kind of a hint that it's you. Yeah. That and the fact that he's uh, smelled like kerosene. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Patrolling police officers found a woman who was complaining about being stopped from driving to her home with her children. So they pull her over. She was driving a little erratically, and she seemed upset. And they said, what's the matter? And she said, well, I had just driven to the convenience store. What's the problem? I just want to keep driving home with my kids. And they said, blow into this. And she was completely drunk, complaining the entire time. She didn't understand why she could not drive home from the store. Right. With her kids. It uh, turns out you can't drink and drive. No, you can't. There's so what she blow? Uh, they did not disclose what she blew, but she was taken right away and complained the entire time. She did not understand why she couldn't drive home. I may have been arrested a handful of times and complained every time. <laughs> right. This is wrong. Yeah. What are you out of your mind? No, no. One time I said, yeah, this is totally my fault. You guys got me. <laughs> yeah, you guys totally got me. Canadian police had to rescue a man found naked and stuck in a storm drain. 10 o'clock at night, police were called to Waters and Nicholas Street. They got in reports that a man was stuck in the storm drain. When they arrived, there he was, naked. And they said, are you trying to pretend you're in it? What are you doing in a storm drain? And he said it was a bet. Uh, they're not sure why that required him to take off all his clothes, but he and his buddies had a bet that he wouldn't get in the storm drain and, he did. And, and naked was not part of it? His friends left. His friend ever, ever, ever. You guys haven't done that, right? Naked in a storm drain? No. No, but not I've been in remember. plenty of storm drains Why? when I was a kid. Oh, well, the kind playing. that, like, if your street is on a slope, all water, the rain, goes down to that thing down there. Yeah. I've been in that a bunch of times. My, my, we had one in our neighborhood, and it was, they took out the metal bar, and you could just slither right in there. Wow. So if you take off all your clothes and grow a little bit, then you would have been this man. Well, if I could just do take out my clothes to grow a little bit, I'd have done it. <laughs> uh, the Michigan Central Station, a train station, has been purchased by Ford Motor Company for $90 million. And people said, well, what are you going to do with an yeah. old train depot? And they said, well, duh, turn it into a haunted house. $90 million. <laughs> what? Why does Ford want to do this? Yeah, it's a bad, bad business. Is it a permanent fixture? Uh, they have not elaborated. They said details will be forthcoming, but plans are underway for this to be turned into a haunted house. All right, I got to go with some kind of publicity stuff because they can't yeah. just think that that was a viable idea to do with $90 million. Yeah, I mean, eventually you'd break even after like 300 years 300 of charging years. admission for, for the haunted house. <laughs> yeah, that's not really a year-round business. No, it's not. And Michigan's like sucks in the winter. And yeah. in the summer, it sucks. <laughs> Well, we've had so many stories about 
things going wrong on planes, delaying planes, people misbehaving on planes. Well, in this case, it wasn't a people, it was a thing. Flights were canceled out of South Africa's airport because thousands of bees made a temporary home in an airplane engine. Oh, wow. How strange, right? That is strange. They had to call beekeepers uh, who arrived to help out Mango Airlines. They said they've been called. I don't know that I'm comfortably flying on Mango Airlines. It just sounds like you didn't give it any thought at all. It sounds like uh, the kind of the thing at the end of Usual Suspects where he's just staring at the wall. And I think we'll call our airline Mango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. I'm with you. And maybe that's why the bees were confused. And also, spoiler alert, on the end of Usual Suspects, I had that on my Netflix queue. Thanks a lot. Oh, you haven't seen that? It's a bummer. <laughs> The beekeepers who arrived to help out said they've been called to all sorts of scenes. An airplane was the first. There was a swarm of, of about 20,000. How often do they run those jets? Because it takes a minute for, yeah. for to have a hive that size. Yeah. The pictures were disturbing because it definitely looked like they can they converged on en masse. Mm. Don't know why. Uh, we've got a lot still coming up. Did you know this? Every hour of the day from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., we are giving you another shot at winning money for nothing on KZOK, a thousand bucks. You're listening for a new hourly keyword. You text that keyword to 200, 200 and your next chance to win is at 910. So just about 20 minutes. But sooner than that, we are going to get What's the Story Tori? Tori will be telling us all the new music that is coming out in stores, plus entertainment and sports next.